hi guys so I'm following up on my previous video in uh, previous video I gave you one exercise uh, like why the printout values were uh, 10 and 20 before and then after it was uh, 10 and 10 so I thought I would uh, give you the answer but uh, I think uh, let's wait <laughs> I mean the I, I will give you a hint at least so I, I I told in the previous video that it's a stack operation going on there so I will show you one more uh, sample like that and you could probably guess at why that was 10 otherwise uh, we will sort it out in future I will I, I would want to give you something to work on so because these reverse engineering things and uh, the programming and all the stuff that goes around these things it's so much of uh, hands-on stuff it's you can watch so many videos like this but uh, unless you have your own own hands getting dirty you're writing code and debugging so you wouldn't learn much I will show you another program so uh, this is the program and it's not doing uh, much so it's just return zero so the way I am compiling this is through uh, developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2017 so if you have a similar setup navigate to the command prompt and then main.c and I can link it and I can uh, pass the debug flag so why, why I am doing this because uh, I could in theory even if I do this much it will compile and link as well but I want to have link flag so that I can have a PDB symbols because we need the symbols to debug so I will explain shortly what the symbols are so done okay and then we also need uh, the listing file so for that we have to only compile it so th this is what you do first you uh, do this and then uh, maybe instead of uh, all this I just immediately I just got an idea so this is my uh, main uh, program so I will delete the rest so let's try something new here so the way the compiler linker works is first you compile and then link even if you do not specify link option the compiler would call it anyway so to stop that you do a C switch so it will only compile and it will generate the object file so this is the object file and but the thing is we also want the assembly listing so the compiler may not convert C into assembly and then assembly into object code but if you want to see like how it happened because just think about it everything in the main everything in this program they are just strings right so I this is a string and then there is a space and then there is a string and then there is a bracket and there is one more bracket and then there is space so now this may or may not exist so it could be like this it could be like this doesn't matter so these special characters so the compiler looks for that the three main components of a compiler are first of all is tokenizer so this is the tokenizer which converts all the source into a series of tokens and then there is abstract syntax tree so when this, once this thing is done so we have a tree like structure and then finally we convert it into object code the machine code so in that process we can also make it uh, we can know that what kind of assembly listing was generated So this is the assembly listing for that so th this is the main function so now if you have seen my previous uh, course on assembly programming so you would be familiar with all these things so the these all these things are like a template so the main thing is this much this is your main function guys so you would see that uh, this thing is happening so from previous assembly course we know that this this thing happens the preamble code this thing happens when a function call is happening so this means that main is not the first function that is called there are so many others that we will see in the debugger after a while so now this is uh, the stack frame getting created for the main and inside there is nothing much happening because uh, we are simply returning zero 
so this is pop ebb and uh, return zero that's all let's see that in the debugger now uh, with the sdk you will also have access to windbg this is windbg and okay we need to have okay this is what i was talking about now the compiling is fine so this is compile the object code and we want to also see the assembly listing so this would be the assembly listing which i just showed and now we can link it link main dot obj and then pass this flag debug so what this will do is it will generate a pdb symbol so this is a symbols file so now what happens is since i have the object code which is this one and now i have exe file this one so how on earth someone is going to know that this was my function name because all the names are lost like you wouldn't see any name here you wouldn't see anything this is just uh, some variables going on so how would you know that this is a main function or something you wouldn't know anything so this is it looks like main it's a listing file that's why it looks like main but this information would be lost so to keep that information we need a pdb file so now let's run the debugger so uh, this is windbg guys and uh, you can set up like this i prefer it uh, like this so this is my command window this disassembly is registers and this is the memory so when i see something being happening in the memory i can go to that location and just quickly check that so what we will do is we will check the loaded modules the loaded modules are main and then kernel base kernel 32.dll nt dll and so many nt dll is by the way the last layer of uh, user space after that the kernel space starts so main function this is the module name is main the binary is main so let's set a breakpoint my binary name is main and module name is also main so how you set a breakpoint you set bp command so that's how you set a breakpoint and then we can see the the breakpoint list which is bl so i have a breakpoint there and then let's go g so when we press g so we will see almost a very similar assembly like structure that we see over here so this is very very similar so uh, but the thing is here uh, you have the uh, module name uh, all these things it's coming because of this pdb file otherwise it it wouldn't be there so uh, i will not uh, talk much now uh, I, all i wanted to uh, give you today is uh, just how the c program is compiled it's uh, compiled and then linked and then how we can see that in a debugger and how that looks like so this is assembly guys so i would highly recommend that you watch my previous uh, video on assembly so after that if you come here it would make a lot of sense so uh, as part of uh, windows uh, reversing so i will be covering the basics of uh, c uh, like the reversing part i will not tell you how to program in c that i assume that you have already learned i will tell you how a if loop for loop and uh, while do while all these things how they look like you would be surprised that all the kind of different loops that you use in c in assembly we have only one type of loop but i will not give you much for now so let's keep the learning going and how a function looks like in assembly how we jump to different locations if else statement evaluation it's in assembly it's a little different the registers that we use so primary registers like eax ebx so on and the flags register the instruction pointer so these i have covered in depth in my assembly course so you should watch that and after all these we will come over here this one so after all we are reversing to understand the vulnerabilities or probably find them so at least we should be able to understand the vulnerabilities so as a security researcher this is very very essential that you and how you understand how the vulnerability is working and how you can block it so 
for now we will focusing on C so that's why we have all the weakness enumeration in C we have very very similar in C++ like what mostly applies in C also to almost a lot extent applies in C++ as well uh, even C++ have their own unique vulnerability types which are not in C as well that's also possible so uh, I, we will uh, read uh, these things and uh, we will uh, let me show you my example let's say buffer over read let's say uh, let's open that so if you come over here so you will see a C sample right you will see a C sample so now what I am doing here is I am first setting up your base like how a C program the for loop the if loop the the while loop and then the function calls the variables the malloc memory allocation library functions how we call them what they do how error, error manipulation happens how structure union all those C things that you have learned so I will show you how the same thing looks in assembly and when the, uh, these things happen so how that would look in assembly because in Windows world we have access to only the exe files we do not have the luxury of source code that exists in Linux world it doesn't exist in Windows world so let's say there is an application called Adobe Reader or MS Word you wouldn't ever get the source code of Adobe Reader or MS Word but it is possible that there could be a PDF file and if you open that the Adobe Reader would crash so every year so the attackers make such exploits and it costs the economy a lot of lot of money it, it causes, a, causes a lot of loss so every year so uh, that what we are trying to learn here is uh, without having access to the source code how we can look at the binary so now this thing is buffer over read so you can see that this is an integer and basically this is a function which is a int socket so it's receiving a parameter which is of integer type so that you already know so this is like the buffer and then get message buffer and then place the content of buffer into message process copy the message into string processing and then index and then everything looks good right so where is the overread happening let's read for some more so if you read get message ignoring possibility that buffer is greater than buffer size so this is where the vulnerability is now that guy has even commented now it is very intuitive just see the name is get message and this is the buffer size from where you are reading that so you are reading that from the socket so what the socket is uh, integer type and buffer size is probably global variable so if the buffer is greater than buffer size so it means these two are probably some integers because we already know that uh, uh, int socket is an integer so buffer size must be integer so it looks like it's a read operation happening into this uh, from uh, this socket into this buffer or maybe from this buffer into socket and the size is here so it's a kind of a you're trying to read more so if the buffer is greater than buffer size it could be probably reading more now place contents of the buffer into memory structure so now this is a pointer and uh, this is another function and uh, di these codes would directly uh, they will not compile so you would have to fill all these tubs to uh, make them work and then uh, after that this, this doesn't look like it will run just like that it needs some uh, little more massaging around these function because these function I do not see anywhere this is one more function okay so copy message block into string for processing this is nothing so wh the thing is what I'm happening uh, what I'm thinking is this is where something is happening but it's not clear what this message is doing get message from socket and store into a buffer so where where this thing is implemented because uh, if I see socket so it's an integer so if I check over here so what what I'm doing from integer integer to buffer and then buffer side doesn't make sense so we would probably need to have this uh, code more fleshed out and then we will be able to see this that this is actually a buffer over read happening so now if you read more than the buffer size what what basically happening is a memory leak basically so let's say the buffer size is 10 so it means uh, the, uh, down there in the in the stack 
so you would have the return address stored somewhere so if you can access that you would have access to the return address so from there you can have a good idea where you can place your attacker controlled code so that you can jump to that so this is how memory leak can be exploited so all this aslr thing it it just defeats the aslr if memory leaks happen so it will defeat the aslr you may not be able to run code exactly like that if dep is enabled data execution prevention and by the way this is what i am talking about this is protection from vista days like back in 2000 five or three maybe maybe uh, six or seven something like that i don't know when vista came like 2006 i guess so this is that time old like aslr and dep these things with windows 7 things came and with windows 8 like it's like a very very heavy exploit mitigation so but at least even if we are not able to exploit we should be able to crash that and uh, even that thing, uh, something is crashing also is a problem. Let's say this application is running in customer environment and if something crashes, so even though the company is not compromised, but the company would be a loss because of the downtime. So it can be exploited or not, it, it has to be researched, but uh, any bug in the customer environment has to be resolved. So <coughs> in a closed source program, we will not ha have access to this uh, source code even a glimpse of it like we can have a good idea that uh, here a buffer read is uh, happening so but uh, we are not sure that what this function does but we know that down here uh, nothing is happening so it's probably over here but uh, i can guess guess at it and probably eventually i will find where the vulnerability is but the thing is in in windows you will have this thing exe file you will not have a c program like that so that time you will have to uh, run it through a debugger like this or maybe disassembler which i will uh, cover uh, in future i, I, I have uh, ida pro disassembler i use that and uh, but for now for a simple analysis crash analysis windbg is enough you don't have to purchase expensive ida pro and uh, there is ida free version also available but i would suggest that you uh, because this is not a malware this is a simple program which we wrote and uh, and probably you will also write uh, while replicating this demo so you have to have good understanding of uh, WinDBG and uh, it's a very good uh, as you can see like I have so much of uh, screens over here I just have to issue some commands over here and I can see all the things moving pieces so now there are many variants of such debugger like there is NTSD, KDB uh, so many those are purely command line and I am not very comfortable working pure command line like if I run a command over here I should be able to see the effects over here how the hell I would navigate to that and see that that's uh, very cumbersome there are other debuggers as well like uh, immunity debugger but the limitation is uh, immunity doesn't work in kernel mode and probably it's 32 bit so in WinDBG we do not have any such restrictions. we can debug the whole kernel itself if we like so the same principle applies how we set a breakpoint how we jump through an instruction through function calls how we analyze heap and uh, stuff like that so uh, that's it uh, for now guys and uh, i will see you next time and we will talk more about uh, c programming uh, basics and then eventually we will come over here and next time when we see a binary and if it crashes because of some pdf file or something we would exactly know by running that in the debugger where the problem is thank you have a good day bye bye